Even though this video is meant to be a rebuttal to, a, to Jehovah Witness doctrine, it also, I believe, has a very deep revelation of who the Son of God really is. In fact, it's been months since I've been wanting to put this video up, but once I got this particular aspect of revelation, I think it really brings a deeper understanding of who Jesus really is. According to Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus is Jehovah's only begotten Son. Jesus is unique in that he is different from all other sons, since he is the sole Son that was created by Jehovah himself. All other sons of God that were created by Jehovah were created by Jesus. All other sons that were created were created by Jehovah's firstborn son, Jesus, according to the Watchtower. Since Jesus was created as the Son of God, Jesus could not be God himself. That is their logic. That is their thinking. Now, John 3.16 is probably one of the most known passages of scripture, yet there is more to this verse than meets the eye. Not only scholars, but even Jehovah Witnesses agree that Jesus is God's only begotten Son. However, the question that needs to be asked is when Jesus was begotten and what does that mean? Have you ever thought about when did this happen? Now, Jehovah Witnesses will say, well, before the world began, Jehovah begot Jesus. In fact, Abraham begot Ishmael first, according to Hebrews 11:17. Isaac is called Abraham's only begotten son. Thus, only begotten is that which is unique, according to the scriptures. Now, the book of Psalms is the first mention of God begetting a son. Psalms chapter 2, verse 7 states, I would declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. The book of Hebrews mentions the same. So in those two passages, it speaks of a certain day something happened. Let's look at Acts chapter 13, verses 30 to 33. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we, de and we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus again, as it is written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Notice that in these passages, it is pointing to the resurrection, but why? Wasn't Jesus the son of God before that? Yes. Then what is going on here? Well, first of all, I have a number of videos that prove that Jesus was not created. Proverbs 8.22, Colossians 1.15, Revelation 3.14, and John 1.1. 1, 1. Thus, Jesus was not created in the eternal past. Yet, if that is true, when did Jesus become God's only begotten Son? The scriptures are clear that during his time on earth, he was the Son of God. Look at his baptism. Remember, God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus also asked his disciples, Whom do you say that I am? And Peter acknowledged, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. We see also at the transfiguration, the voice also said, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him. Now, some have thought, well, maybe at the incarnation. Yet, I would say no for the following reasons. According to the scriptures, Jesus is the exact likeness of the Father. Since his Father does not have a fleshly body, then how could Jesus be the exact likeness of his Father if his Father never had a fleshly body? So I don't see how he could become the Son of God at birth. See, his likeness is not according to the flesh, but that of the Spirit. For how can this refer to his incarnation as the exact likeness of his Father? Like I said before, his Father does, does not have a fleshy body. So, if Jesus was not created in the eternal past, as Jehovah's Witnesses believe, nor at his birth, then we are only left with two options. One, at the resurrection, in which a number of scriptures seem to point to this, or the eternal Son of God. 
Now, I believe that Jesus was always the eternal Son of God. Since he is the exact likeness of God, then he can only be the exact likeness of God if he were like him in every way. This would include being the self-existent one. If Jesus was not self-existent, then he couldn't be called the exact likeness of God. Now, you might be saying, then how do we deal with the scriptures that say at the resurrection, God said, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Well, first of all, only begotten means that which is unique and one of a kind. Now, the question would arise if God said to Jesus at his baptism, thou art my son in whom I am well pleased then that is proof of him that he was the Son of God, right? Absolutely. But when God spoke it, he did not say, this is my only begotten Son, but thou art my beloved Son. Now, I believe there's a reason for this. Now, remember, Jesus is the Word of God, and everything that came into existence was spoken by the Word of God. The Gospel of John confirms this, John 1, 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. When Jesus was on the cross, notice he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At that moment, God the Father separated his unique relationship with his Son. He had to do it in order for Jesus to become sin for us who knew no sin. Now, here's where I believe in Jesus becoming not the Son of God, for he always was, but something much more profound. God the Father would declare, ready for this? Thou art my son. That particular spoken decree is what caused Jesus to rise from the dead. And he would become the sole regenerated son of God by the Father himself, in which would be the only time that the Father would speak life instead of the Son speaking life. Thus, as Jesus was declared the Son of God in Psalms 2, at his incarnation, at his baptism, at his transfiguration, and even in his at the crucifixion, Matthew 27, 54, he is also declared the Son of God according to Romans 1, 4 and Acts 1333 as the only regenerated or only begotten Son of God by the very decree of God the Father. Thus, only begotten is not speaking of Jesus being created by the power of God the Father, but God the Father spoke life into his Son, and thus he became the only regenerated or only begotten Son of God by the Father himself.